Howdy guys and dolls. This is a story about why it's important to love your kids equally and fairly. So buckle your story belts and enjoy the ride. And away. We. Go. Tanisha Preachings was an unplanned child. She was born shortly after her parents graduated college. But sadly, they considered that birth of a child is a huge obstacle to their happiness. They wanted to chase their dreams of a good career. But for having a child, they had many difficulties with it. Then her grandparents on her mom's side decided to take care of her for the time being. As a matter of fact, they insisted on the birth of a girl because they're against abortion. A couple of years has passed, and the preachings had finally managed to get decent jobs and settle down. And Hanisha started to live with them again. However, the kid never had the love and attention that every kid deserves. Her parents often ignored the girl's whims and problems. They started their business. Things were going so well that they hired a nanny to do the parenting for them. The preaching parents would rather devote more time to work them with their daughter. When Tanisha was five and one half years old, her mom got prego again. But this time, it was a desired pregnancy. Her parents were looking forward to the appearance of their second daughter. When Tanisha's little sister, Desiree was born, everyone was very happy, and the parents adored the baby, and started to give her all the love and attention. But unfortunately, the grandparents only met their younger granddaughter once. They died due to a car accident, on their way home. Tanisha was looking at the situation and wondered why was Desi getting everything, while she got nothing but pain and grief. At her age, she quickly understands it all, and is a very independent kid. She was extremely upset because she never got the love and affection that only parents could give her. Let's fast forward, five years later. And Hanisha graduated from Kukuburid Elementary. Soon they're gonna have a party to celebrate the end of the school year. So she timidly asked Ramon to buy her a new dress. She begrudgingly gave her money, and shouted, Why are you constantly asking me for stuff? Go to the store and choose something for yourself. But Tanisha was never like that. She asked her parents to buy something very seldomly. And since her childhood, she's been a humble, loving, intelligent, and non-fussy girl. On the next day, she was at the store to buy a dress. But, she saw her parents. And younger sister there too. They have bought her expensive clothes. She approached her parents. But none of them noticed her. Having to return home, the girl burst into tears because she felt like her parents hated her with a passion. But still continued to love them. She loved them and hoped that they'll return their love. The sisters' relationship wasn't even any better. Desiree always blamed Hanisha for all her own tricks. The parents always took her side and punished their eldest daughter over nothing. Eight years went by in a blur. Nitch had to take care of herself, and Desi has been growing up arrogant, entitled, self-serving, and dependent on her parents. And Hanisha graduated long on highway honors, and even received a scholarship to study at a university in Chicago, with paid accommodations. The parents could help her to enter a much better university, and rent her a nice apartment, but as usual, they flat out refused to do nothing of the sorts. So she packed her stuff before moving out of the hellhole. But nobody knows that she was leaving. Because five days later, Tanisha's mom called, asking her about her whereabouts. Mom, I told you that I'm going to Chicago for college, so, you're no longer living with us. Then could I turn your room to Des's art studio? Tanisha realized straight away that she doesn't have her own room in her house anymore. Her answer was, Alright, fine. Do whatever you want with it. I love you guys. Five more years had passed, and Desiree graduated from Long Long High. Her parents had to pay for private lessons with tutors, so that the girl could pass her exams. They also paid to one of the most prestigious colleges in America, so that the girl was accepted. After Tanisha left, she rarely saw her family. Once or twice a year, she went home to Alabama. But no one was waiting for her. And sometimes it even happens that nobody was home. But she missed her family. Finally, Tanisha graduated college and is one of the best students.
Therefore, a little while after she was fresh out of college, a company offered her a job with a decent hourly wage. Anisha finally realized that all her efforts hadn't been in vain. She's now a part of a team of specialists who travels around the world to work and promote the services of the company and earned a satisfying amount of money. Everything was looking up for her, despite having a very toxic family. But soon her parents were on the brink of ruin. They tried to do their best to prevent bankruptcy. Tanisha found out about it from her dad. The girl was very happy because of her calling answered with glee and heard a nervous tone of voice. But her dad didn't ask how she was doing and quickly got straight to the point. Tanisha, sweetie, we need money. Our company is on the brink of ruin. We had to sell all our property and cars in order to avoid bankruptcy. So please buddy, don't let us down. Tanisha heard the words she never heard from either of her parents before. It was a special moment for her. Okay. I'll see what I can do. So she went to the Nero's bank. And sent them a significant amount of money. The next day, she called her parents to check on them and asked if she sent the money. But there was no reply. One week had passed and her mom called to ask for more money. It turned out that the money she sent a week ago wasn't enough. Nisha said that she'll gladly do it. She was gonna take out most of her savings. But first, she wanted to find someone from her family on social media. Her parents weren't registered anywhere. She easily found her little sister on Instagram. And when she saw Desi's photos, she looks like she has seen a ghost. One pic shows our dad with a bottle of Jack in his hand next to his car which he said he had sold. What a liar. And another shows that this was sitting in an expensive cafe with her mom. Why those selfish pics? All these pics were new and were posted right after the girl sent them the cash. I can't believe this. Their vile, rotten, toxic, gold digging scumbags betrayed me. Not one of them had changed at all. So she firmly decided that enough was absolutely enough. So she stopped giving them money altogether because it's very clear that they don't need it in the first place. Another week has passed, and Hanisha's mom called her and was indignant that she still hadn't sent the money. I'm sorry mom, but I'm gonna cut you off financially. How dare you do this to your family? I gave birth to you, and that was the only nice thing you did for me. All my life, you and dad ignored me, favored my sister over me, ridiculed me, and I couldn't catch a break because of you guys. Do you know how upsetting it was? And now, you even have the audacity to ask me for my money? What the actual heck is wrong with you? The reason why I was helping all is because I felt tons of pity for the people who I thought were my family. But not anymore, y'all don't care about me. So give me one reason why should I keep caring about your problems? Uh -huh. See that? Nothing. No, do me a solid, and don't you dare try to talk to me, call me, text me, or even contact me in any way. And congratulations for losing a daughter, Judy. Goodbye. And that was the very last time she ever spoken to them. Usually, she feels terrible when she's unable to help her so-called family, but she now understands that she was doing the right thing by rejecting them like they did her. Tanisha had to change phone numbers, so it's not to hear the upsetting words of her annoying parents. Soon, the preachings had to sell all the property in order to save their business. But they still didn't make it. They lost it all. Now they live in a small crappy apartment with their youngest daughter, who had to drop out of college. But none of that would have happened, if they paid more attention to their older child. Tanisha had to bear with the fact that her family never loved her at all. So all her ties with her former family are officially broken. Good riddance. This story teaches the parents that they should love their children not only equally, but respectfully too. And they shouldn't give prominence to one of them because it could only cause harm and grief. So does Zuri, who used to have the world revolved around her. Achieved nothing in life, and still lives with her parents. Tanisha, on the other hand is now filthy, stinking, rich and is happily married to an eccentric yet wonderful man, Captain Liam Dickley III, who is also her nanny's nephew. And if they ever have children, Tanisha vows herself that she and Liam could be way better parents than her own parents had been to her. The end.
So you see folks, because Judy and Davis couldn't love their girls equally, they shouldn't have more than one. If you like this story, then hit the thumbs up button and subscribe. Well, that's it. Until we meet again, this is Jazz Clown 1999 signing off.